Chapter 18 Body Fluids and Circulation You have learned that all living cells have to be provided with nutrients, oxygen and other essential substances. Also, the waste or harmful substances produced have to be removed continuously for healthy functioning of tissues. It is therefore essential to have efficient mechanisms for the movement of these substances to the cell and from the cells. Different group of animals have evolved different methods for this transfer. Simple organisms like sponges and cylindrates circulate water for the surrounding through their body cavities to facilitate the cells to exchange these substances. More complex organisms use special fluids within their bodies to transport such materials. Blood is the most commonly used body fluid by most of the higher organisms including humans for this purpose. Another body fluid, lymph, also helps in transport of certain substances. In this chapter, you will learn about composition and properties of blood and lymph and the mechanism of circulation of blood is also explained here. 18.1 Blood Blood is a special connective tissue consisting of fluid matrix, plasma and form elements. 18.1.1 Plasma Plasma is a straw-colored viscous fluid constituting nearly 55% of the blood. 90-92% of plasma is water and proteins contribute 6-8% of it. Fibrinogen, globulins and albumins are the major proteins. Fibrinogen are needed for clotting or coagulation of blood. Globulins primarily are involved in different mechanism of the body and albumins help in osmotic balance. Plasma also contains small amount of minerals like sodium, iron, calcium, iron, magnesium, iron, chlorine, iron, etc. Glucose, amino acid, lipids, etc. are also present in plasma and they are always needed in transit in body. Factors for coagulation or clotting of blood are also present in the plasma in an inactive form. Plasma without the clotting factor is called serum. 18.1.2 Formed Elements Erythrocytes, leukocytes and platelets are collectively called formed elements and they constitute nearly 45% of the blood. Erythrocytes or red blood cells are the most abundant of all the cells in blood. A healthy adult man has on an average 5 million to 5.5 million of RBCs of blood. RBCs are formed in red bone marrow in adults. RBCs are devoid of nucleus in most of the mammals and are biconcave in shape. They have a red colored iron containing complex protein called hemoglobin. Hence the color and the name of the cell. A healthy individual has 12 to 16 gram of hemoglobin in every 100 ml of blood. These molecules play a significant role in the transport of respiratory gases. RBCs have an average lifespan of 120 days after which they are destroyed in the spleen. Leukocytes are also known as white blood cells as they are colorless due to lack of hemoglobin. They are nucleated and are relatively lesser in number which averages 6000 to 8000 mm per cube of blood. Leukocytes are generally short-lived. We have two main categories of WBCs, granulocytes and agranulocytes. Neutrophils, eosinophils and basophils are different types of granulocytes, while lymphocytes and monocytes are the agranulocytes. Neutrophils are the most abundant cells, 60-65% to of the total WBCs and basophils are the least, 0.5-1% among them. Neutrophils and monocytes, 6-8% to are phagocytic cells which destroy foreign organisms entering the body. Basophils secrete histamine, serotonin, heparin, etc. and are involved in inflammatory reactions. Eosinophils, 2-3% to resist infection and are also associated with allergic reactions. Lymphocytes 20 to 25 percent are of two major types B and T form. Both B and T lymphocytes are responsible for immune response of the body. Platelets are also called thrombocytes, are the cell fragments produced from megakaryocytes, special cells in the bone marrow. Normally contains 1,50,000 to 3,50,000 platelets per mm cube. Platelets can release a variety of substances, most of which are involved in the coagulation or clotting of blood. A reduction in number can lead to clotting disorders which will lead to excessive loss of blood from the body. 18.1.3 Blood Groups As you know, blood of human being different in certain aspects to it appear to be similar. Various type of grouping of blood has been done here. Two such groupings, the ABO and RH are widely used all over the world. 18.1.3.1 ABO grouping 
ABO grouping is based on the presence or absence of two or phase antigens, chemicals that can induce immune response on the RBCs, namely A and B. Similarly, the plasma of different individuals contain two natural antibodies, proteins produced in response to antigens. The distribution of antigens and antibodies in the four group of blood A, B, AB and O are given in table 18.1. You probably know that during blood transfusion, any blood cannot be used. The blood of donor has to be carefully matched with the blood of recipient before any transfusion to avoid severe problems or dumping destruction of RBC. The donor's compatibility is also shown in table 18.1. This is table 18.1. From the above mentioned table, it is evident that group O blood can be donated to person with any other blood group and hence O group with individuals are called universal donors. Person with AB group can accept blood from person with AB as well as other groups of blood. Therefore, such person are called universal recipient. 18.1.3.2 RH grouping. Another antigen, the RH antigen similar to one person in reserves monkey is also observed on the surface of RBCs of majority, nearly 80% of the humans. Such so individuals are called RH positive and those in whom this antigen is absent are called RH negative. An RH negative person, if exposed to RH positive blood, will form specific antibodies against the RH antigen. Therefore, RH group should also be matched before transfusion. A special case of RH incompatibility mismatching has been observed between the RH negative blood of a pregnant mother with RH positive blood of the fetus. RH antigens of the fetus do not get exposed to the RH negative blood of the mother in the first pregnancy as the two bloods are well separated by placenta. However, during the delivery of the first child, there is a possibility of exposure of the maternal blood to the small amount of RH positive blood from the fetus. In such cases, the mother starts preparing antibodies against the RH antigen in her blood. In case of a subsequent pregnancy, the RH antibodies from the mother, RH negative, can leak in the blood of the fetus and destroy the fetal RBC. This could be fatal to fetus or could cause severe anemia and jaundice to the baby. This condition is called erythroblastosis fetalis. This can be avoided by administering anti-RH antibodies to the mother immediately after the delivery of the first child. 18.1.4 Coagulation of blood You know that when we cut your finger or hurt yourself, you won't does not continue to bleed for a long time. Usually, the blood stops flowing after some time. Do you know why? Blood exhibits coagulation or clotting in response to an injury or trauma. This is a mechanism to prevent excessive loss of blood from the body. You will have observed a dark reddish brown scrum formed at the site of a cut or an injury over a period of time. It is clot or coagulum formed mainly of a network of threads called fibrin in which dead and damaged formed elements of blood are trapped. Fibrins are formed by the conversion of an inactive fibrinogen in the plasma by an enzyme thrombin. Thrombin in turn are formed from another inactive substance prevent present in the plasma called prothrombin. An enzyme complex thrombokinase is required for the above reaction. This complex is formed by a series of linked enzyme reaction cascade process involving a number of factors present in the plasma in an inactive state. An injury or trauma stimulates the platelets in blood to release certain factors which activate the mechanism of coagulation. Certain factors released by the tissues at the site of injury can also initiate coagulation. Calcium ion plays an important role in clotting. 18.2 Lymph Tissue fluid As the blood passes through the capillaries in tissue, some water along with many small water-soluble substances move out in the spaces between the cells and tissues leaving the larger proteins and most of the formed elements in blood vessels. This fluid released out is called the interstitial fluid or the tissue fluid. It has the same material distribution as that in plasma. Exchange of nutrients, gases, etc. between the blood and the cells always occur through this fluid. An elaborate network of vessels called the lymphatic system collects this fluid and drains it back to the major veins. The fluid present in the lymphatic system is also called the lymph. Lymph is a colorless fluid consisting of specialized lymphocytes which are responsible for immune response of the body. Lymph is also an important carrier of nutrients. 
hormones etc fats and absorbed through lymph in the lacteals present in the intestinal villi 18.3 circulatory pathways the circulatory patterns are of two types open or closed open circulatory system is present in arthropods and mollusk in which blood pumped by the heart passes through large vessels into open spaces or body cavities called sinuses annelids and chordates have closed circulatory system in which the blood pumped by the heart is always circulated through a closed network of blood vessels this pattern is considered to be more advantageous as the flow of fluid can be more precisely regulated all vertebrates possess a muscular chambered heart fishes have a two chambered heart with an atrium and a an ventricle amphibians and reptiles except crocodiles have a three chambered heart with two atria and a single ventricle whereas crocodile birds and mammal possess a four chambered heart with two atria and two ventricle in fish the heart pumps our deoxygenated blood which is oxygenated by gills and supplied to the body parts from where deoxygenated blood is returned to the heart single circulation in amphibians and reptiles the left atrium receives the oxygenated blood from the gills lungs skins and the right atrium gets the deoxygenated blood from the other body parts however they get mixed up in the single ventricle which pumps out mixed blood incomplete double circulation in birds and mammals oxygenated and deoxygenated blood received by left and right atria respectively passes on to the ventricles of the same side the ventricles pump it out without any mixing up that is the separate circulatory pathways are present in the organisms hence these animals have double circulation let us study the human circulatory system 18.3.1 human circulatory system human circulatory system also called the blood vascular system consists of a muscular chambered heart a network of closed branching blood vessels and blood the fluid which is circulated heart is the mesodermically derived organ is situated in the thoracic cavity in between the two lungs slightly tilted towards the left it has a size of a clenched fist it is protected by a double walled membranous bag pericardium enclosing the pericardial fluid our heart has four chambers two relatively small upper chambers called atria and two larger lower chambers called ventricles a thin muscular wall called the interarticular septum separates the right and the left atria whereas a thick wall the inner ventricular septum separates the left and the right ventricles the atrium and the ventricular of the same side are also separated by a thick fibrous tissue called the atrioventricular septum however each of these septa are provided with an opening through which the two chambers of the same side are connected the opening between the right atrium and the right ventricle is guarded by the valve of three muscular flaps or cusp the tricuspid valve whereas the bicuspid or the mitral valve guards the opening between the left atrium and the left ventricle the opening of the right and left ventricles into the pulmonary artery and the aorta respectively are provided with the seminular valves the valves in the heart allow the flow of blood only in one direction that is from atria to the ventricle and from ventricle to the pulmonary artery or aorta these valves prevent any backward flow The entire heart is made up of cardiac muscles. The walls of the ventricles are much thicker than that of atria. A specialized cardiac musculature called the nodal tissue is also distributed in the heart. A patch of this tissue is present in the right upper corner of the right atrium called the sinoatrial node (SAN). Another mass of this tissue is seen in the lower left corner of the right atrium, close to the atrioventricular septum called the atrioventricular node (AVN). a bundle of nodal fibers atrioventricular bundle av bundle continues from the av end which passes through the atrioventricular septa to emerge on the top of the interventricular septum and immediately divide into a right and a left bundle this bundle give rise to a minute fibers throughout the vascular musculature of the respective sides and are called purkinje fibers these fibers along with the right and the left bundles are known as bundle of his the nodal musculature has ability to generate action potential without any external stimuli that is it is auto excitable however the number of action potential that could be generated in a minute vary at different parts of the nodal system the san can generate the maximum number of action potential that is 70 to 75 per minute and it is responsible for initiating and maintaining the rhythmic contractile activity of the heart therefore it is called the pacemaker our heart normally beats 70 to 75 times in a minute average 72 beats per minute
18.3.2 cardiac cycle how does the heart function let us take a look to begin with all the four chambers of the heart are in relaxed state that is they are in joint diastole as the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve are open blood from the pulmonary vein and the vena cava flows in the left and the right ventricle respectively through the left and right atria the semilunar valves are closed at this stage the assay end now generates an action potential which stimulates both the atria to undergo simultaneous contraction the atrial systole this increase in the flow of blood into the ventricles by 30% the action potential is conducted to the ventricular side by avn and av bundle from where the bundle of his transmit it to the entire ventricular musculature this causes the ventricular muscles to contract ventricular systole the atria undergoes relaxation diastole coinciding with the ventricular system ventricular systole increases the ventricular pressure causing the closure of tricuspid and bicuspid valve due to attempted backflow of blood in the atria as the ventricular pressure increases further the semilunar valves guarding the pulmonary artery right side and the aorta left side are forced open allowing the blood in the ventricles to flow through these vessels in the circulatory pathway the ventricles now relax ventricular diastole and the ventricular pressure falls causing the closure of semilunar valves which prevents the backflow of blood into the ventricles as the ventricular pressure declines further the tricuspid and the bicuspid valves are pushed open by the pressure in the atria exerted by the blood which was being emptied in them by the veins the blood now open again moving freely in the ventricles the ventricles and the atria are now again in relaxed joint diastole state as the earlier soon the san generates a new action potential and the events described above are repeated in the sequence and the process continues the sequential event in the heart which is cyclically repeated is called the cardiac cycle and it consists of systole and diastole of both the atria and ventricles as mentioned earlier the heart beats 72 times per minute that is that many cardiac cycles are performed per minute from this it could be deduced that the duration of cardiac cycle is 0.8 seconds during a cardiac cycle each ventricle pumps out approximately 70 ml of blood which is called the stroke volume the stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate number of beats per minute gives the cardiac output therefore the cardiac output can be defined as the volume of blood pumped out by each ventricle per minute and averages 5000 ml or 5 liter in a healthy individual the body has the ability to alter the stroke volume as well as the heart rate and thereby the cardiac output for example the cardiac output of an athlete will be much higher than that of an ordinary person during each cardiac cycle two prominent sounds are produced which can be easily heard through a stethoscope the first heart sound lug is associated with the closure of the tricuspid and bicuspid valves whereas the second heart sound dub is associated with the closure of the semilunar valves these sounds are of clinical diagnostic significance 18.3.3 electrocardiograph ecg you are probably familiar with this scene from a typical hospital television show a patient is hooked up to the monitoring screen that shows a voltage traces on a screen and makes the sound beep 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 as the patient goes into cardiac arrest This type of machine electrocardiograph is used to option an electrocardiogram ECG ECG is a graphical representation of the electrical activity of the heart during a cardiac cycle to obtain a standard ECG as shown in the figure 18.3 a patient is connected to the machine with three electrical leads one to each wrist and to the left ankle that continuously monitor the heart activity for a detailed evaluation of the heart's function multiple leads are attached to the chest section here we will talk about a standard ecg each peak in the ecg is identified with a letter from p to t that corresponds to a specific electrical activity of the heart the p wave represents the electrical excitation or depolarization of the atria which leads to the contraction of both the atria the qrs complex represents the depolarization of the ventricles which initiates the ventricular contraction the contraction starts shortly after q and marks the beginning of the systole the t wave represents the return of the ventricle from excited to the normal state repolarization the end of the t wave marks the end of the system 
Obviously, by counting the number of QRS complex that occur in a given time period, one can determine the heartbeat rate of an individual. Since the ECGs obtained from different individuals have roughly the same shape for a given lead configuration and deviation from this shape indicates a possible abnormality or disease. Hence, it is of great clinical significance. 18.4 Double Circulation as mentioned earlier, the blood pump by the right ventricle enters the pulmonary artery, whereas the left ventricle pumps blood into the aorta. The deoxygenated blood pumped into the pulmonary artery is passed to the lungs from where the oxygenated blood is carried by the pulmonary vein into the left atria. This pathway constitutes the pulmonary circulation. The oxygenated blood entering the aorta is carried by the network of arteries, arterioles and capillaries to the tissue from where the deoxygenated blood is collected by the system of venules, veins and vena cava and emptied into the right atria. This is the systematic circulation. The systematic circulation provides nutrients, oxygen and other essential substances to the tissues and takes CO2 and other harmful substances away for elimination. A unique vascular connection exists between the digestive tract and the liver called hepatic portal system. The hepatic portal's vein carries blood from intestine to the liver before it is delivered to the systematic circulation. A specialized coronary system of blood vessels is present in our body exclusively for the circulation of blood to and from the cardiac musculature. 18.5 Regulation of Cardiac Activity Normal activities of heart are regulated intrinsically that is auto-regulated by special muscles, nodal tissue, and the heart is myogenic. A special neural center in the medulla oblongata can moderate the cardiac function through autonomous nervous system. Neural signals to the sympathetic nerve, part of ANS, can increase the rate of heartbeat to strength of strength of ventricular contraction and thereby the cardiac output. On the other hand, parasympathetic neural signals, another component of ANS, decrease the rate of heartbeat, speed of conduction of action potential, and thereby the cardiac output. Adrenal medullary hormones can also increase the cardiac output. 18.6 Disorders of the circulatory system High blood pressure, hypertension. Hypertension is the term of our blood pressure that is higher than normal, 120 upon 18. It is the measurement 120 mm Hg is the systolic or pumping pressure and 80 mm Hg is the diastolic or the resting pressure. If the effect of blood pressure of an individual is 140 upon 90 or higher, it shows hypertension. High blood pressure leads to heart disease and also affects vital organs like brain and kidney. Coronary artery disease, CAD. CAD often referred to as erythrocytosis affects the vessels that supply blood to heart muscle. It is caused by deposit of calcium, fat, cholesterol, and fibrous tissue, which makes the lumen of the arteries narrower. Angina, it is also called as angina pectoris, a symptom of acute pain, appears when no enough oxygen is reaching the heart muscle. Angina can occur in men and women of any age, but it is most common among the middle aged and elderly. It occurs due to conditions that affect the blood flow. Heart failure. Heart failure means the state of heart when it is not pumping blood effectively enough to meet the needs of the body. It is sometimes called congestive heart failure because congestion of the lungs is one of the main symptoms of this disease. Heart failure is not the same as cardiac arrest when the heart stops beating or heart attack when the heart muscle is suddenly damaged by an inadequate blood supply. Summary. Vertebrates circulate blood, a fluid connective tissue in their body to transport essential substances to the cell and to carry waste substances from them. Another fluid limb, it is also used for transport of certain substances. Blood comprises of a fluid matrix plasma formed elements, red blood cells and white blood cells and platelets constitute the formed element. Blood of human are grouped into A, B, A, B and O system based on the presence or absence of two surface antigens A, B on the RBC. Another blood grouping is also done based on the presence and absence of another antigen called reserve factor on the surface of RBC. The space between cell in the tissue contain a fluid derived from blood called tissue fluid. This fluid called lymph is also similar to the blood except for the protein content and all the formed elements. All vertebrates and a few invertebrates have a closed circulatory system. Our circulatory system consists of a muscular pumping organ, heart, a network of vessels, and a fluid blood. Heart has two atria and two ventricles. Cardiac musculature is auto-excitable. 
ऐसे एन जनरेट द मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ एक्शन पोटेंशियल पर मिनट सेवेंटी टू सेवेंटी फाइव पर मिनट एंड देर फोर इट सेल्स द पेस ऑफ द एक्टिविटी ऑफ ऑफ द हार्ट हैंड सेट इज कॉल्ड द पेस मेकर एक्शन पोटेंशियल कॉफी से एट्रिया एंड द वेंटिकल टू अंडर गो कॉन्ट्रेक्शन सिस्टोल फॉलोड बाय द रिलैक्सेशन डायस्टोल सिस्टोल फोर्स इज द ब्लड टू मूव फ्रॉम द एट्रिया टू द वेंटिकल एंड द पलमोनरी आर्ट्री एंड अरोटा द कार्डियाइक साइकिल इज फॉर्म बाय सिक्वेंशियल इवेंट इन द हार्ट विच इज साइक्लिकली रिपीटेड एंड is called the cardiac cycle a healthy person shows 72 such cycles per minute about 70 ml of blood is pumped out by each ventricle during cardiac cycle and it is called the stroke or beat volume volume of blood pumped out by each ventricle of the heart per minute is called the cardiac output and it is equal to the product of stroke volume and the heart rate approx 5 liter the electrical activity of the heart can be recorded from the surface or by using electrocardiograph and the recording is called electrocardiogram ecg which is of clinical importance we have a complete double circulation that is two circulatory pathway namely pulmonary and systematic as present the pulmonary circulation starts by pumping of the oxygenated blood by the right ventricle which is carried to the lung where it is oxygenated and returning to the left atrium The systematic circulation starts with the pumping of oxygenated blood by the left ventricle to the aorta which is carried to all the bony tissues and the deoxygenated blood from them is collected by the vein and returned to the right atrium though the heart is auto excitable it functions and be moderated by neural and hormonal mechanisms chapter 1 thank you